Hi, this is Acme with a weekend edition of the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Box Markets at Sunday, the 28th of November. Just looking at the FTSE again after Friday's spoof forward slash ambush uh, regarding COVID. Here we've got, I suppose the worst case scenario is that we've got a rising wedge. So uh, we've got that resistance line there from May with this market hitting that uh, peak back earlier this month around 7400 the nightmare scenario would be that we had an end of day close back below the floor of that well that support line there around um, 7000 in fact just below the 200 day moving average at 7027 and then we head back towards 68 or even i suppose uh, 6600 could be a possibility hitting that line of support there from back in july but uh, I suppose still the odds are that uh, we'll bounce off the floor of this channel as we have done several times before since uh, uh, this time last year. So bouncing there on that line uh, several times, even in September with the uh, Evergrande debacle. And uh, so uh, any sort of uh, support likely to come in around the 7000 level or just below as a worst case scenario. Although, as I said, end of day close below that uh, zone could then open up a worst case scenario target down to 66 but i suppose probably going to go with the rebound scenario still uh, even if uh, it seems a bit risky uh, moving on to uh, bitcoin which um, has also uh, fallen with the uh, covid scare and uh, here we've got a rising trend channel it's quite a simple uh, look well so far it looks rather simple the rising trend channel there from may floor of the channel there around 51,300 let's call it and so that would be the place uh, that the dip zone for this market uh, below 5100 or 51,000 rather a risk of uh, back to the 200 day moving average at 46,200 but at this stage it doesn't look as though this is more serious than a, uh, a zigzag within a rising trend channel which I suppose we've had uh, really since uh, the spring on this market on to more no normal fare uh, usual stuff uh, with the small caps agronomics is the first uh, contender here uh, nice key reversal to the upside on Friday, but ob obviously more uh, significant uh, given the way that the market was uh, in hell on Friday, I think down 3.6% or whatever it was on the FTSE. So uh, quite a show of strength there for uh, agronomics with a 5% rise and uh, above 23 pence. We're looking for a move up towards at least the 50-day uh, moving average 28 and then maybe up to the low 30s over the course of December. So let's see that pans out another stock which uh, was stronger on a down day uh, than it normally is on an up day was uh, dev clever and here <clears throat> we've got that sort of messy situation where we're not we're not quite sure whether we're in a rising trend channel still or uh, already uh, turning around at the moment probably give the we're giving the benefit of the doubt to the uh, upside scenario so maybe that support line there from back in february running through the uh, recent lows around 27 pence above 27 pence there's a chance of at least a retest of 35 pence especially given the way that this market was so strong on a weak day on to uh, ectec uh, which uh, has sort of started to uh, look more encouraging for people here we've got this uh, uh, break of this well the first thing was the shares were up on friday so that was pretty impressive up seven percent second is the second chance was the second attempt at breaking that line of resistance there from April above 1.4 pence uh, or so we're looking for up to two pence for the shares which is a May resistance line the other glory of Friday's price action was that uh, there was a, an unfilled gap to the upside after an inside day breakout so pretty strong stuff there for Ectech now we've got a series of um, COVID plays which um, I suppose for gene drive shareholders uh, the uh, South African variant uh, came just in the nick of time. We were heading for new lows, but now we've got some bullish divergence here and the chance perhaps of a move back up towards the low 30s is the best case scenario, even if the shares then fizzle out from there. But good bullish divergence with the November support versus September and October prices, which were considerably higher. On to in spirit, which I haven't looked at for a couple of years, I think probably now, but uh, just daring to look at it now. The only positive here that the one can say and the reason for inclusion really is that we had, uh, um, apart, apart from the fact that it's a sort of white knuckle right, but the other point is that uh, we've had good bullish divergence with a lower late November support matched by higher RS and higher RSI trace. So that bullish divergence could mark uh, a near term low for the shares and uh, up to the 0 0.08 pence area. Once again, if, even if it's uh, one of those blink and you missed it type of affairs. But again, another stock 
which was up on a very weak day. My health checked uh, an obvious uh, winner. We had also, uh, just to mention, I suppose, that uh, with the uh, COVID plays, we had the uh, European lockdown, which uh, provided the first recovery for the shares <clears throat> in uh, middle of the middle of this month. And then obviously the, uh, the new variant coming through um, in the last day or two. The uh, April resistance line there at 2.4 pence above that, looking to fill the gap up to 3.5, at least even if we fizzle out after that and that should happen over the course of December. Novacit <clears throat> quite quick on uh, getting this uh, potential as a, as a potential recovery situation. Initially we had a target around 320. Now it's up to five pounds which I think should be uh, in the bag early next week even if uh, the uh, whole thing was a spoof. Uh, stop loss an end of day close back below Friday's support around uh, the uh, £3.60 uh, level, if you can afford that. Otherwise, an end-of-day close back below the 200-day moving average at 4.08. Nanosynth also uh, back in business, uh, famous for its uh, um, <coughs> its face masks. Uh, here we've got breakout of that falling wedge in place since August uh, versus the 0.6 pence level and uh, could add up to a retest October resistance in the low 90s. Uh, even if we then fizzle out again, as we have done so many times before. On to Synergen. And uh, here you can see that uh, the shares in a rising trend channel from back uh, at the end of August. Floor of the channel also level with the 50-day uh, moving average at £1.68. So that means that we're looking for top of the channel there as high as £2.60, which I'm sure will cheer some people. Time frame on that, maybe the next one to two months. If you are cautious, uh, maybe you wait for uh, an end of day close uh, above the uh, that resistance line or weekly close above that resistance line. But I think enough has been done with that consolidation at the 50 day moving average really to uh, suggest that uh, Synergen is on its way. Breaking the pattern with uh, one oil and gas company, probably the best one of the year to date, uh, Zephyr and uh, a key reversal to the upside bouncing off the area of the 50 day moving average around 6.6 .6 pence and uh, we're still looking for uh, 11, 12 pence here maybe over the next uh, two to three months uh, but I think that it looks as though uh, Zephyr ready now to uh, finally break out and let's see how we go with that. In fact you could argue that we've already broken out with, that, with the break of that resistance line there from June but uh, sideways shuffle here should lead to a breakout relatively soon. That's it for me today. More updates during the week.